Why did the people betray Muslim ibn Aqil, the cousin of Hussein ibn Ali, after knowing who he was, after initially pledging their support and their lives, Nafdiq, we will sacrifice for you with our wealth and our children and everything else. How could they betray him in such a lame, in such an awkward fashion, in the space of a day from the morning till the evening? Because he wants, of course, to go and bring back Hani ibn Urwa, one of his loyal supporters. How could they betray him? And that, in fact, is called the bystanders effect. The, the, the women would say to their children, you, have, you don't need to go and support Ibn Aqil because there are other people who can do that for you. It's 18,000 bays. Others will do the job. And the, and the fathers would say, wait till you hear of the armies marching from Damascus of Yazid. You guys have no chance against him and his army. Right? They became bystanders in this. Right? They knew when the armies were preparing themselves, they knew that there is no way that Ibn Aqil has any support, that, that he will be massacred and, and martyred. If you really want to take a lesson from the events of Karbala, you want to take a lesson from the life of Hussein Ibn Ali, at this point in time, then try and understand what is it to, me, to be a bystander, what does it truly mean? There's been so much discussion about this because of recent events, in fact, the, the case in 1964 of Kitty Genovese, the case of the 38 witnesses who saw the murder of a woman in New York who was stabbed, raped, killed, and there were eight, 38 witnesses to that murder. Since that time to now, there has been more than 600 articles and papers written to try and understand what is the psychology of the one who, who bystands and says, you know what, it's bad, but I can't do anything to help it. And people like Philip Zimbardo in his analysis from the Lucifer's effect, how good people turn evil, has explored this. From his analysis, there are like two things and there's obviously more. But he says one is this diffusion of responsibility where you think, well, I know it's bad, but uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of us and other people can do the job. Like we see images of human suffering. We see Muslims starving. We see Muslims being killed and you think, well, I know it's bad, but the Ummah is so big, maybe other people will, will take the lead and do something fantastic. Maybe this will happen, maybe that will happen. And the other thing is audience inhibition, where even if any one of us sees a person on the street and is lying down and he's uh, incapacitated or he's in a situation, you might think to yourself, well, I wouldn't know how to help that person. I know I should help that person, but I wouldn't know how to help that person. I wouldn't know how to check their heartbeat or their pulse or anything else and therefore I would embarrass myself if I try to help that person right so you have these things but but every one of us is in that situation the people of Kufa they they sat back and they just watched they became bystanders but every one of us in fact has the capacity to become like that in all things in all situations right but we know we we look back and, we, and there's been many cases in human history like that that's only one example people speak about the case of Shandashere in 1993 where, where a girl was 12 years old, but she was taken from her home and she was uh, stabbed, but the stabbing didn't quite work. Then she was strangled, but that didn't kill her either. And then she was set alight and there were witnesses to that. There were people who were part of the, of the group that inflicted that pain on her who didn't take part. And then they confessed to others who, who then knew of the crime and then they confessed to others and it actually the ripple effect, it went through and through. At the end there were so many witnesses but no one said anything. What is the thing? People speak about the case of animals in 1903, the case of Topsy the elephant, an animal. You know, who, and they were testing the alternating f currents of electricity, the high, the high currents of electricity. And they tried it out on an elephant and it was... More than 1,500 people were there spectating, but they killed the elephant. They killed the elephant, right? And, and they were all bystanders in that. And there's so many cases, the case of Kevin Carter, 1993. The photographer took the picture of the Sudanese girl on the floor. And it looks as if she's trying to get food. She's not. She's trying to get back to camp, right? But you can't see that because the images are still. You don't, we can't see that. And then there's a vulture beside her waiting for her to die so the vulture could eat her Kevin Carter took 20 minutes to take that photograph took 20 minutes to get his camera right and he was waiting in fact for the vulture to spread its wings because he thought that would be the perfect photograph in any case he won the Pulitzer Prize for that photograph as the best picture of the year 
but he takes 20 minutes and although he repelled the um, vulture, he made no effort to, to take this Sudanese kid into some area of safety and he killed himself of course within a few weeks after winning the prize he, he committed suicide but he too then was a bystander and even though we think well what an awful picture look at the irony behind it the one who took it but was by himself a bystander and we we all have that human capacity to become like that right to become like the people of Kufa who were bystanders and they betrayed Muslim ibn Aqil and as you will learn they betrayed Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu